Welcome Sheepdog Nation to another episode of Sheepdog Nation with your host, me, Autumn Clifford. I want to welcome you so much um, and thank you so much for being here. We are an are on episode number eight. It is fucking crazy what this podcast has uh, gone through, the amount of lives it's already touched. We are literally, uh, we just hit our one month anniversary. We have over 1,200 downloads. Um, I have been getting officers and their spouses reaching out to me left and right, thanking me so much for this podcast. And I just have to tell you that I just want to thank every single one of you listening. Um, And all of you that share this out, it means the world to me. I've got a lot of officers listening to this while they're on duty. um, And I want to thank you so fucking much for being here for multiple reasons. And I'm going to touch on that in tonight's podcast. But what I want to, um, what I want to say before I dive into it is I want to say to you that if you have found this podcast, uh, or any one of my episodes helpful for you, please do me a favor and just share this. I, you know, it's just a quick share on Facebook, quick share on Instagram, quick shout out, uh, anywhere, anywhere that you, uh, hang out on your social platforms. I'd really appreciate it. I'd really appreciate a review, an honest review of what you think about this. If, if this helps you, um, especially on iTunes to help me get the ratings up and out there. Um, I don't, uh, I don't really promote this. It's, oh, it's really about by, um, word of mouth. And, uh, so I really want to get this out there and I want to help as many, uh, sheepdogs as possible tonight, what we're going to be talking about. And I keep saying tonight because it is really late for me. <laughs> so I am recording this at night, but so what we're going to be talking about on episode eight is stress from the job and what it will do to you. The reason I want to talk to you about this is I feel like nobody wants to talk about this shit because this isn't exactly positive, but we need to talk about it. But at the end, if you stay to the end, what I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you, um, like tactics on how to change and how to survive. Okay. Uh, survive law enforcement. And so, um, this is huge, especially, you know, if you're the officer, but even if you are the spouse too, listening, um, this can definitely be implemented, uh, for both of you. This will save a marriage. This could save a life. So this is a very important episode. I'm going to tell you the things that, uh, a lot of people aren't going to tell you straight up. Um, you know, law enforcement as a whole, it's not warm and fuzzy, is it? You know what I'm saying? We laugh at death because we don't know how to fucking handle it. We laugh at horrific scenes because we do not know how to handle it. And, uh, and we do not help one another cope with shit. Nothing. I remember, um, there was, I, I mean, I remember when I was working, I, I dealt with like, a, like I, my department as a whole went through a lot of fucking crazy shit for a couple of years. We had crazy calls, crazy murders and shit that happened, uh, especially for our like little town of Maine that, that stuff really doesn't happen. So it was, it was really crazy. And, um, I remember, uh, an officer that I worked with, she actually pretty much not, she didn't witness, but she was very close. Uh, she was the first officer on scene for, um, it was a stabbing, but it wasn't really a stabbing. It was more of a, it was like a slit, slitting of the throat um, that happened in one of our supermarkets. And um, she was fucking devastated because I think you know, she got there as the woman's jugular was bleeding out literally in her hands. And she held the woman in her hands. And rightfully so, I fucked her up a little bit. And I, and I can't speak for the agency because I have no idea what, you know, support was given to her. But you know, I just remember from the officers, you know, none of the officers knew how to handle it. Did they talk to her about it? Did they not? Did they joke around? Did they not? And it's a very awkward thing. It's a very awkward thing because, you know, we're not taught how to handle it. Truly, <laughs> you're not taught how to handle stress. You're not taught how to handle the hot calls and how to handle the stress. And even not even not even the hot calls, right? But just a compound effect of dealing with any of the calls. So we're not taught really how to deal with it. It's just, you fucking deal with it. You just suck it the fuck up. You quote unquote be a man and you deal with it. But I have news for you. We're not fucking policing in the 19th or the 20th century anymore. You know what I'm saying? Shit's changed. The job has changed. And, um, 
we need to, you know, we need to take action and we need to change the way that we're handling our stress. But first we need to be educated about it. So this is a really good uh, heads up if you are not yet a police officer. So I want you to pay attention. But even if you are a cop, you're going to know a lot of this, but I'm going to bring this to your attention because again, no one's talking about this shit. So we're going to talk about it. What I want to tell you about the, uh, check that. What I want to tell you about the stress that you endure as a police officer it is hitting you from every side. It is hitting you from absolutely every angle. And if you've listened to any other of my episodes, you know, I've talked about this. I'm going to get pretty, um, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to give you the down and dirty about all of it. But I want to tell you that you are getting pounded over the fucking head with stress um, more than uh, a regular citizen on a day-to-day basis. Whether you are 10-8, which is what we call in service, or 10-7, which is out of service, um, in my 10 codes anyways. So if you hear me say that, then now you know. But whether you are in service or you know out of service, you you're getting hit over the head with stress because you are a sheepdog. You pay attention. You you know, you're ready, you're always ready to act and protect, you know, and always ready to meet the wolf, right? And 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 you know, we're not just saying that. I'm making light of a very fucking dark, you know, situation like where you might have to fucking hurt somebody or kill somebody because they're trying to hurt you or, you know, somebody else, an innocent person. I mean, that that's a lot of fucking stress on someone. Okay. Because guess what? Regular people don't fucking think like that. And they sure as fuck are not about to step up and fucking handle the wolf, you know, or handle a criminal when they come. Right. That's what makes us different. That's what makes us sheepdogs. But uh, with that responsibility, you know, comes a lot of fucking stress. You know what I'm saying? And so the stress can make you very easily as a new police officer, you're you're probably not going to gain weight as a new police officer, but after, you know, your two to three year mark, you will, you could, (laughs) you might not, but you very easily could gain weight because the stress might make you gain weight. If you're an emotional eater, you know, you'd be fucking eating some French fries, eating some Cheetos in the fucking cruiser, you're going to gain weight. You know, if you're like me, I'm an emotional eater. I go straight to the motherfucking Reese's Pieces fucking or the Reese's peanut butter cups. You know what I'm saying? That was, <laughs> that was my go-to whenever I get a little stressed out. Um, and I was always stressed. Um, uh, you know, you are, the amount of stress that you are going to endure is going to make you feel like you are fucking crazy. You're going to literally feel crazy. You're going to feel like an outsider to your own life. You are. You're going to be like, what the fuck happened to me? You know, I wasn't like this. Like I wasn't this uptight person. I wasn't stiff. I wasn't rigid. Like, and that was a conversation I used to have with myself and I still have it with myself. Like I was one of the most outgoing, fun people that I knew and fucking, I stopped and I still, I'm still, because once you're a sheepdog, you're always a sheepdog. Like you don't just stop. You don't get to just be like, okay, I'm hanging it up. Like, see ya. You know, it's just not that simple. At least for me, it's not. And, um, you know, I, you definitely do. You, you definitely become, you know, you feel like you're crazy because you have to understand, like you're getting it from everywhere, right? Like you're a police officer, you know? And so when you're on duty, you're getting it from the citizens and, you know, you want to, you know, get your shit together and not slip because you don't want to say a bad word or you don't want to say anything wrong or do anything wrong because everyone's got a camera and then we've got, you know, we've got the white shirts and then we've got fucking our sergeants and lieutenants and we've got our fellow officers and then we got to go home and face our family and our loved ones. And and then lastly, we have to go home and we have to look at ourselves in the mirror. And I think some days that's, that's the worst thing, right? That's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of responsibility and it compounds over time. Okay. Um, you become, you start to feel, or you, I mean, I don't even know if you start to feel it, or maybe you just start doing it. You really are, you start to become like unable to, um, to function in like normal society, you know, especially, you know, if you work shift work and you're working crazy hours and like, you know, what's normal society Monday through Friday, they work, they have weekends off. Well, we don't. You know, we don't get holidays off, you know, we don't get our fucking, we don't, you know, we don't get to go do all that. And we, um, you know, we don't see our family as much as we want to. Right. And, you know, you put all your trust in, you know, your fellow officers and, and you put all your trust in like the department and who you work for. And then something fucking happens and you feel like they, you know, they fucked you over. You no longer can trust them. 
that's that right there. That's a bucket load of stress that every officer faces. And uh, that's tough, you know? And so again, this all compounds. Um, and so what happens is you only, you can only function when you're, when you're in service. Like you can only function when you're on the job because you know how to hold it together. You don't have a choice when you're in your Superman uniform or superwoman uniform, you, you know, you don't, you, you don't have that choice. Like you, you don't get to be an emotional wreck. Like you, you just don't because you're not going to be able to do your job and you can get killed that way. Right. So when you come home and you take that uniform off and you're a human, you don't really know how to be that human. Like you're like, I don't know how to have feelings. I don't know how to feel like, I don't know how to function. Like I just want to fucking drink beers or, you know, and, and fucking sleep and eat Cheetos on the couch and watch Netflix. Like, I don't know. And I, you you know, sometimes you get to the point where you don't want to talk to anybody, you know, you don't want to do anything. You kind of just want to fucking veg and I get it. I think that every officer needs to veg to some extent. We all need our downtime, but my hope for you is that you can make that downtime as far as the vegging as minimal as possible and make your downtime a very, um, a, like a healthy hobby that maybe you and you and your family can, um, be, engage in together because that that's going to keep you surviving law enforcement. You know, the whole going and sitting on the couch and, and just fucking being a vegetable, literally, It's going to cause a lot of problems for you, you know, and uh, so let's make sure that we're not doing that. Um, You're going to feel like everyone's out to get you. The stress is going to do that to you. You definitely are going to feel like everyone's out to get you um, because you just become so stressed out. You know, you you just literally feel like your back's against the wall and that's just how you feel. So you're ready to fucking fight, right? Because you're a sheepdog. Like, like, let's not forget this. You know, you're fucking, you're probably if you're hanging out with me, you're an alpha, right? I'm a fucking alpha. I'll tell you that right now. I'm alpha female all day long. And you know, I'm ready to fight you. You back me into a corner, you motherfucker, you better be fucking prepared. Right. And I guarantee you're a lot like me. So guess what happens when we're real fucking stressed out, right? You ever seen a real stressed out fucking Belgian Malinois fucking back into a corner? I'm going to tell you right now, you do not want to fucking hang out with that dog because you will get bit, (laughs) right? Well, that's you. And uh, you need, you just need to realize that. And the reason why I know it kind of sounds like, Ooh, Jesus Christ, Autumn, like you're really fucking, you're really, you know, you're not very, you don't got any pep in your step tonight. Well, I do. And I'm going to talk to you about it in a little bit, but I need to bring you these truth bombs. I need this to come. Like you need to know this shit. Like we can't like tiptoe around and just always be talking about how cool we are, you know, that we're fucking cops and you know, we fucking arrest people and we get to drive fast. Like we can't always be talking about that stuff because while we all know it's great, we, there's this huge fucking like elephant in the room, right? That nobody else talks about. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it's true. And every single one of you listening to this either is going, you're either going to face this or you already have, right? Or you're facing it right now. And I don't want it to win. Okay. I want you to win. And so that's why I'm a little fucking, I'm not sounding like, like, you know, all pumped up right now because this, is, fuck, this shit sucks. Okay. It fucking sucks. This is shit again that nobody motherfucking told me when I signed up for this job. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to, ch- we're going to chat about it. Um, you're going to probably, you're going to, what's going to happen is, so you're going to think that everyone's out to get you. And then you're going to start like second guessing sh- everything that you do everything that you do, you're going to start second guessing because you're so stressed out because your sergeant's been up your fucking ass, you know, because the fucking, the chief, the lieutenant, the major, the captain, someone's been fucking up, you know, his or her ass. And so fucking, you know, you are now you're fucking stressed out. You're like, God damn it. Like, I don't know what to do. Like yesterday when I made this decision, you know, I got fucking written up. Now I don't want to get written up again. And holy fuck, 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 fuck this. I'm just going to call my sergeant and they're going to tell me what they want me to do. But then that becomes fucking annoying because then your sergeant's like, what the fuck? You're like dependent, like too dependent on me. And like, you're a cop, like make your own decisions. And then you're like, wait a minute. But yesterday I made a decision. You fucking hated it. Now I don't know what to do because I've always made that decision. But for some fucking reason, you decided to have a fucking hair across your ass. You know, <laughs> can't say that's happened to me, right? Yes, I can. But that's the shit you're going to fucking face. So we got to be prepared for it. We got to know that that stuff is what's causing you stress. All right. All of that stuff is causing you stress and it's going to cause you to have 
you know, a poor and bitter attitude. If you don't catch it, pay attention. Okay. Pay attention. What is your attitude? When you start, when you roll up, you know, uh, window to window, you know, with one of the, one of your fellow officers, like, what are you guys talking about? Is it more positive? Is it more negative? I'm going to tell you right now, I had a lot of negative conversations with a lot of cops in my career. I've only been a cop for fucking six years. I'm telling you right now, a lot of, everyone just wanted to be negative. Everyone. And towards, you know, when I got hurt and stuff like that, I'm not going to lie. Like I got, I got negative myself. Like it fucking sucked. Right. Like I was hurt for a long time before I ever told anybody. And, um, you know, one of my partners, he, uh, I'll tell you right now, this guy, he has my, I, I have his back until the day that fucking I die. (laughs) He was just, he's a cop's cop, old school guy. He used to, you know, he used to take care of me on the overnights because I'll tell you right now, and every officer knew it. I, I could never, I never could stay awake for a whole overnight. Oh my God, it was awful. And so they'd all take care of me. But uh, anyways, my my back would hurt me so bad that I would have to literally, I'd have to stick my feet out my window. Okay, I think like 2 a.m. I'd stick my feet out my window to get the, because I needed my feet to be elevated because it, it, my back was just killing me so bad from sitting there and like I try, you know, taking my duty belt off was like definitely out of the question. We didn't have like external vest carriers. My back was just killing me and he would just sit and he would just wash my back, you know? And, um, you know, he and I, you know, for a while we had some really positive conversations, but then, (laughs) you know, at some point kind of got, you know, down, going downhill because, you know, I'd get written up for stupid shit. He'd get written up for stupid shit. And then we just, you know, we'd be in this downward spiral and, um, I'm I'm telling you right now to pay attention to that because that that'll kill you. That'll kill you probably quicker than anything else. You know, police work itself breeds negativity. I mean, we hang out with the worst three to five percent of the entire nation's you know population. You know, we go and deal with what everybody you know what everybody else doesn't want to deal with, right? Like that's our jobs. But here's the thing, you guys, you're not that. Okay. You're not one of them. You're not the community's worst people. So stop acting like them. You are not them. So stop fucking acting like them. You don't need to go to their level. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you about it. I'm going to give you some ideas and how to be different, but like, you really need to like sit back, put this on fucking pause for a second and just really fucking think about that. Like, You are not on their level. Yes, you deal with them. Yes, you've got to learn how to talk with them. You've got to learn, you know, you've got to learn everything about those kinds of people. You know, the drug dealers, the, you know, the drug traffickers, you know, the fucking criminals, you know, the the thieves and all of that, you know, rapists and murderers and shit like that. Like, unfortunately, like you're going to have to, you're going to have to learn about them and you have to profile them, right? Like, and what I mean by profiling before everybody gets their motherfucking panties in a bunch, I mean, you're just going to have to like figure out their personalities and what they're like and how they talk so that you can fucking talk and act like them. Because then when that happens, then they become more comfortable and they're going to talk with you. And then guess what happens? And then they fucking give you information or they admit to crimes, which is what we all want as police officers, right? Want to solve the fucking problems. But the thing is, is what happens at some point in our fucking careers, we get mixed up and it's not that we like forget who we are, but we forget who we are. And it's not that you're out there committing crimes. You're not, but your fucking attitude is acting much like these people that you're fucking arresting. But at the same time, you know, all the officers that you work with, their attitudes are pretty much the same unless they're the fucking FNG, right? The fucking new guy and fucking you're like, oh, he's just an FNG or she's just an FNG. She's fucking that'll wear off. And it does. And we have this like awful cycle, right? And and so, you know, you, you want to really pay attention to that right now. Like, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, am I acting like the fucking three to five percent right now? Am I negative? You know, am, am I spending a lot of time fucking shitting on everybody? And like, am, do, do I spend a lot of time fucking, you know, my back against the wall or back in the corner and not trusting anybody and talking a bunch of shit about people? Like, is that me? Because that's adding fucking pounds and pounds and pounds of stress to you. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's going to compound. It's going to cause you big fuckloads of issues. And we just don't need that. We need you surviving this fucking career. I mean, it's so dangerous on the street. We, we need, we need you to be good emotionally. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking, we just need you to be focused about surviving the street and, and be good with your emotions. And this is, this is huge. This part's huge. Okay. You're, um, so 
the next thing that I want to talk with you about in uh, is I'm going to make it real quick and then I'm going to get right into how we can change this is so the stress is going to cause you PTSD and anxiety. You're going to, you might become a little alcohol or a lot alcohol dependent. I know a lot of cops love to get shit face. And when I mean shit face, I mean fucking shit face all the time. And I'm not going to say that, you know, when I wasn't, when I was working, did I like to have a good fucking drink, you know, to make me forget about things? Yeah, I did. But here's the thing that compounds over time causes a problem, huge problem, huge, not only will it make you fucking broke and fat and you know, you never know who the fuck you're going to wind up with that night. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it, it's going to cause issues if you're in a relationship because who the fuck wants to be with a drunk? You don't want your kids seeing that. Like you don't, you don't need that. Okay. Um, you know, I've seen, I've seen officers become pill dependent because it becomes their prescription. It becomes their pills and they like, get the shakes if they're not taking them and fuck that shit. You don't need it. Um, I've seen a lot of officers suffer from insomnia. You know, you don't get any fucking sleep. Your schedule's all out of whack. You don't have any kind of structure, no stability. You're a fucking mess. And that's a problem because that's going to feed into everything we talked about above. Your, your inability to relax is going to cause serious fucking issues for you because no one's going to want to be around you because you're a fucking, you're a fucking tight ass fucking, I don't know. (laughs) You're just wicked like uptight and wound tight, right? Like we don't want that. Um, We're going to, you know, this is all obviously because of the stress and what it does to you. It obviously can cause issues in your relationships with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sisters, your good friends, you know, your, your fucking spouse to say the least. Right. Um, you know, and if you're hell, if you're not even a spouse and you're just dating, it's going to cause some fucking issues. You know what I'm saying? Because you're just this crazy fucking stressed out person all the time and nobody understands it. Nobody gets you. Well, if they don't fucking get you, send them to me because I will fucking t- teach them <laughs> about you. And, uh, but so yeah, like, so you're going to have all these fucking problems. And then here, here's the thing. This is where all fucking, you know, this is, here's the problem. Here's why I'm doing this. Right. And, and if you're new to me and this is the first time you've heard this, but if you're not, then I know you've heard this before, but this shit causes divorce. This causes cops divorce. Okay you know, we've got a 50% divorce rate, uh, in law enforcement. Um, it's even higher than the fucking nationwide standard. Cause I think like the nationwide went down a little bit. Um, so we have a very high divorce rate. There's a lot of reasons for that, but I'm telling you right fucking now it's cause police officers do not know how to handle stress. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. You don't, you can com- compartmentalize it. You can handle stress when you're handling a very hot, like a hot job, right? Like a hot um, call, clearly, right? Because we're all good at that. But what about the stress? What about handling it after? Like after a stressful stressful situation, what do you do when you're like, when you're off duty? How do you handle it then? You, I bet you have an inability to relax, huh? I bet you act a lot fucking different. I bet you have a lot of these symptoms or all these symptoms I've talked about. Um, you know, I bet you overreact a ton. Um, you know, when you're off duty, because what happens is it's like, it's like this like rubber band, right? So if you have this rubber band and you start putting tension on it and putting tension and you start pulling it, right? Cause there's the attention. And then like the circle, the hole, right? The circle and the rubber band starts becoming an oval and then it starts, you know, getting closer and closer. And then all of a sudden it kind of forms like this line. And then, and then before you know it, you can't even see two parts of the rubber band. You can only see one part, right? As you're pulling all of this and putting all this tension on it. Well, at some point that fucking tension, that rubber band's going to snap. Okay. Well, that's you. And when we snap, what happens? Well, I don't really know what happens, right? But here's what I know what the statistics tell me. I know that fucking, we have lost what, over a hundred fucking police officers to suicide. That's completely unacceptable fucking what happens we have domestic violence situations going on we have cops getting OUIs we've got fucking you know just cops fucking snapping and and just doing crazy ass shit and and doing shit on duty that they would never do and like just snapping at people and I mean what is that you guys I'm telling you what it is it's fucking stress because they don't they you know they put us in these in this fucking uniform and they put us in this cruiser and they give us you know these tools to go and be superman but guess what they don't give us the tools to when we go fucking off duty what do we do then you know fucking teach me why 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 is the police department like this cold place to be at i mean 
you know, maybe you don't think it's cold, but I'm telling you, I'm a fucking woman and I'm telling you right now, every police department I've been in, it's cold because nobody knows how to fucking deal with anything and everything's funny to everybody or, and everyone's very serious or they're a fucking jokester. Like that's it. You know, it's not supportive. Everyone wants to give everyone shit. Everyone wants to fucking bust everyone's balls. Well, guess what? That's all well and good, but you don't know who's really dealing with something or not. Like you don't know what your fucking partner just dealt with fucking last week. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't know. And, and we're not creating, we're not cultivating or creating a fucking, you know, an environment that is going to produce fucking good results. And as far as like reducing the stress and, and, you know, um, you know, and, you know, uh, if I could talk, if I could talk and I could think tonight, it'd be fucking fantastic. <laughs> um, but if, you know, it doesn't, we're not increasing the levels of support. We're not in, um, for, like officers we're not so here here's what we can do okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna get off my uh rant here and i'm just we're gonna we're gonna talk real deal stuff okay um here's what we can do is that what we can do is this we need to take fucking action massive action as a family as sheepdog nation this is why you're here this is why i started this podcast this is why i've started my movement we are going to take action you need to take action right fucking now today Okay. You need to, you need to be different. This is why I started my Facebook group. This is why I have my Instagram. I'm not doing things the way that everybody else does things. Okay. Heads up. You don't see me fucking. My Instagram is completely fucking different than any other cop or fucking wannabe cop or fucking retired cops fucking profile. I'm completely different. Why? Because I'm trying to change the game. Okay. I'm trying to change the way that you do things because I want to see you fucking save your life, whether it's hypothetically or literally. Okay. Cause I know what it's like. I've been in the game. I've been there. I've done that. And it almost fucking ate me alive. I almost lost my relationship. I almost fucking hell. I got fucking injured. I almost lost everything, everything you guys. And, but I didn't. And I'm going to tell you what saved my life. You want to know what saved my life? A few things. I fucking consistently worked out. From the day I graduated the police academy, I said, you know what? I'll always be able to run a 5K no matter what. I'm going to be able to run a 5K. I'm always going to be able to fucking pass PT standards. It didn't matter. Now, like I've told you before, I'm going to tell you again. I've never had a six pack. I'm not a fucking, I'm not a girl that's going to eat fucking cabbage or lettuce or fucking chicken and broccoli all day long. No, I'm not. But I still maintained and I like being in good shape. Why? Because not only did I care about being in good shape, I cared about my cardiovascular health because when you raise your heartbeat and you do the high intensity uh, interval trainings and you run, it helps burn off stress. Okay. So I made it consistent. I developed a routine. I had structure and that's what I want you to have. Excuse me. I want you to develop that. I want you to be paying attention to where your mind is going. Like, what are you, what are you focusing on? I'm a huge believer on what you think about, you bring about, right? And so if you are constantly focused on the negative and you're, and you're, you know, you're all in your head and you're, you know, thinking about fucking what you, you know, the call you had last night or what's going to happen tomorrow. And you're just so not in the moment, you're fucked. Okay. (laughs) Quite, quite frankly, what you need to be doing is meditation. You want to be, you want to excel at being an officer. You want to be, you know, you don't want to be better than everyone else. You want to get the, you know, the promotions you want to, you want to be the best and you need to do what I'm telling you because not every, no one does this stuff, but you will find the best of the best do these things. I've learned everything that I'm going to show you from the best in the world, like Tony Robbins. Okay. He is fucking amazing. You listen to guys like Jocko Willink. Um, he fucking, he does the shit every single day. He doesn't, he just doesn't stop. Um, the guy who fucking taught us, um, oh, there's another guy too. And he's a, he's a Navy SEAL and I cannot, Dave, no, not Lieutenant Colonel David Gross, but there's another guy and he, oh, geez, I wish I freaking could remember his thing, but I can't. But anyways, he talks about it. Um, he's a former Navy SEAL now and uh, the unbeatable mind. He wrote the unbeatable mind. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but Google it, look it up. Uh, anyways, he talks about meditation and he took, um, martial arts and he talks about fucking box breathing and all this stuff. 
because and he's the best at what he does because he literally took he took the time to do it. So take five minutes, start out five minutes every single day, meditate, begin right today when you go home, right before, right before you go to sleep or right when you wake up, just get it done, meditate. Okay. And then as weeks go by, get up to 20 minutes, 20 minutes a day, you're going to be good. It's going to change your life. I promise. Okay. Do other things like incorporate some yoga, right? You got meditation, incorporate yoga. You know, um, I've seen a lot of like really fucking badass CrossFitters do yoga because it's going to expand your mind. That is what I want you to do. Expand your mind, get you focused on you, get your mind focused on the, in, in the moment and get you out of worrying about the past or worrying about the future. Okay. We don't want any of that. Um, so we talked about working out, We are going to, I want you to make it your mission to not rely on alcohol, okay? If you're drinking alcohol every day, you better stop that right now. I'm going to whoop your ass. Stop that shit, okay? Um, No alcohol. You well not no alcohol. I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not like if you follow me, I love mead. I go out and I have mead. You know, we have drinks here and there, but like, honestly, um, you know, don't, you don't need to go get shit faced all the time and like, you know have a couple beers, you know, take the edge off, but fucking, you know, having a six pack or 12 pack every single night, you guys fuck that shit. You're done with it. Okay. You need to be the best. You're in sheepdog nation. Now you're one of us and you are going to be the best. Okay. So the best doesn't fucking do this shit. This is what the three to 5% of fucking the population, the motherfuckers that you're arresting out there, this is what they do. They're fucking alcoholics. You are not. Okay. Journal, write things out. Okay. This is something that a lot of fucking cops right now you're going autumn. Are you getting fucking soft on me? I know that's what you're thinking, but you listen to me right now. You need to do things differently because you have a very different life. Okay. Sometimes just writing things out it's just fucking easier. You get shit off, it gets it gets shit off your chest and it's easy. It's safe. You know, we don't have to worry about anybody going and running their fucking mouth. You don't have to worry about anyone judging you. You get it on paper, you get it off your chest, bada bing, bada boom, it's done, right? Burn it if you want to. Um, you know, getting books that will feed your mind, excellent. Fucking excellent. I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna tell you right now, you're talking to a girl who fucking read one book in high school and it was like walk two moons or some shit like that. I loved that book. That was it. That's all I read in high school. I was the biggest bullshitter upon bullshitter. I got through fucking high school with A's and B's and nobody even knows how to this day. My mother included has no idea. Um, because I never read anything, (laughs) but so I'm a very big fan of, um, audiobooks. Get one. Okay. Get them. Especially if you work a night shift, get yourself an audio book. Listen, instead of listening to the radio all shift, what I want to tell you is that you can get yourself a literal education. And that's exactly what I did. And I will tell you that is why I'm here with you today is because I got myself a Tony Robbins education. I got myself a personal development development education a year before I ever got injured. So that when I did get injured, like I didn't I, I could have went down a really bad path, you guys, and I and I didn't because I, you know I couldn't move. I literally was on my couch for a good six months. It fucking blew, but instead of letting it win, I built a fucking business and replaced my income within the first year from my goddamn couch. Okay, like that's what I did, and you can do this too. Like don't you you know you never know what's gonna happen. You never know when you're gonna get injured. You just never fucking know. But if you can focus on building your mindset, right. And, and building your mind and, and building you, you're never going to lose. So get some audiobooks. If you want some suggestions on audiobooks, uh, I want you to come onto my Instagram, comment below on one of my posts and let me know. You're going to see the one about my podcast on there, this latest episode. Come on, hit me, let me know that you want to, you want some audiobooks and I'll make a whole fucking post. I might even make a whole episode about this shit because I'm so passionate about it. Um, you know, make sure you're listening to podcasts such as this one, um, you know, and other good ones that you're interested in. All this stuff is going to compound. And over time, you guys, you're going to get yourself an equivalent of a fucking complete degree with how many hours you'll be listening to this stuff. I want you to make sure that you fucking do not lose yourself. 
as a police officer. Okay. This is, this is the, <laughs> this is the number one thing, you know? And, um, and if you've ever read, um, uh, emotional survival and law enforcement, then you know this. If you haven't, that is going to be your number one book. You're going to go, you're going to go to Amazon right fucking now and you're going to buy it because that is, that is hands down one of the best uh, law enforcement books I've ever read in my life. And, um, and what they talk about is how we lose ourselves as police officers. We completely identify as the 5 right? We completely identify as that cruiser, as that police officer, but we, but we don't unidentify as that way. So when we come home, we're still that cop. Well, I'm going to tell you right motherfucking now. You don't want to be like that to your spouse because if he or she is anything like me, they're going to whoop your ass and fucking kick your ass to the curb. Because I'll tell you right now, the minute Adam walks in this door, he is no longer a motherfucking state trooper. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, go hang up that Stetson because that is not fucking happening in here. And, <laughs> you know, we've gone head to head a little bit. <laughs> we've had some conversations around that. But, um, but it was the same thing when I was a cop. I didn't come in. I didn't come in thinking I was a cop. Right. Because when I did, we had fights. You know, and and the thing was is that we we learned how to not identify fully as as cops. Like so when you come home, what are your hobbies? Who are you? Who were you before you were a cop? For me, I'm a second degree black belt, and I'm getting back into you know I'm getting back into jujitsu. I'm getting back into fighting. Um, I love me. I, I love the water. So like I love being around the water, any water, the beach, a river, ponds. I love that shit. I spend a lot of time doing that. I, you know, I do enjoy walking. That's like some of my hobbies. Him and I shoot together. I love shooting, obviously. But then like that's also a tricky line because that's totally a cop thing. But it doesn't, I mean, eh, you know, it can be, it can be a family thing. But, you know, I love to paint. Like I like to paint pictures or like I love to like refinish furniture. And I like to do this kind, this type of shit. And whatever your hobbies are, that's great. Um, but the thing is, is do them. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't lose yourself in this and don't not do your fucking hobbies because then you'll lose. This is what's going to set you apart. All right. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with tonight is how you're going to beat this and how you're not like, you're not going to allow the stress of the job to take over and ruin you as you need to develop a very strong support system. And ironically or not, which is why I've developed Sheepdog Nation, okay? That's why I'm here. It's why I'm doing what I'm doing is because you need to know that you're fucking, you are not alone. You are not alone. And listen, straight up, a lot of people aren't going to get you. They're not going to understand you. I'm telling you, I've lived it. Half the fucking people in my life still have no clue. You know, three quarters of the people in my life still have no clue about the shit I I have faced about the anxiety, you know, that I deal with right now about my PTSD. Like nobody has any idea, you know, but when you develop a good support system, sometimes they don't need to know, right? Sometimes they don't really need to know. They don't, they just, they just can be there for you, you know, and you, and you, you know, put in place these things that I've talked to you about and not only as something that you do, you know, here and there, you guys, you you need to do it. You need to set up structure. It doesn't fucking matter. You, You know, you need to meditate. You can start out by box breathing, right? So 10 seconds in, 10, you know, five to 10 seconds hold and 10 seconds out and close your eyes and just fucking box breathe, you know, just do that for five minutes, you know, and, and set this up and, um, you know, and, and come here and, and let us, you know, let me be your support system. If you're not in our Facebook group, come on in. Um, you know, if you're not on Instagram, you need to be following me at the lady sheepdog, because you need to know that, you know, someone has your back. You need to know that. And and not only just someone like you've got a whole community that has your back. And, and one thing I'm going to leave you with, and, and I probably will say this every time, you, you know, you hear from me is we need to not forget about the brother and the sisterhood. And I'm going to refer to it as the brotherhood and I'm not fucking sexist. I am the furthest thing from it. I fucking, you know, obviously I fucking believe very much that females can and do the job very well. Right. Um, so I, I'm very far from sexist, but it's just an old school term. So everyone can stop getting their motherfucking panties in a bunch, but we need to, we really need to be focused on that. We are all we have. Okay. We're all we have. 
We get these fucking liberal motherfuckers thinking that, you know, you know, they're, you know, whatever they think. And it pisses me off and I can't even get going down on that rant because I won't let you go. But, you know, we are all we have. Okay, sheepdogs, stop being a blue falcon. Stop being a buddy fucker. Do not ever, ever fuck over your brothers and your sisters in blue ever because they are all you have. When you are in the shits, there are, they are the ones who are going to come for you and who are going to fucking take a bullet for you. And I'm telling you right now, if you fuck your, you know, your brothers and your sisters over, guarantee you they're going to hesitate when, when you call fucking officer needs assistance. They're going to hesitate when you're fucking going through some shit. Do not be that person. Okay. We talked about a lot tonight, my night, maybe not your night. Um, I want to, if you made it here, if you made it all the way to the end, I want to know you're the fucking, you're a team all the way to the end. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to come up with a better term for that. But, uh, again, come on to my, come on to my Instagram, hit me up. Uh, let me know that you made it all the way to the end. Uh, again, if this was a good you know episode, please share it out for me. Uh, if you, um, are on iTunes, you're listening to this on iTunes, please rate this for me. Um, let's get this up there. So other sheepdogs, we need, we need this getting out there. We need other sheepdogs to see this. We want to save as many lives as possible. Right. And we want to come together as a nation, as a sheepdog nation, um, the way that the brotherhood used to be, right. Let's keep that brotherhood strong. All right. I'll see you on Instagram and I'll see you next Tuesday when another episode releases. Bye.